Welcome back. We're in session 10 of the series on spiritual gifts. And those of you around the world, we have students in this classroom who are learning just as you are. And I'm grateful for everyone who is here. This session is a little different than sessions we've had before. We are not going to go verse by verse through the Bible. Instead, the things that we already know about spiritual gifts will be compared to things that are out in research about abilities. You see, every Christian has a spiritual gift, but we also have abilities given to us by God. Quick, what's the difference between caffeinated and decaffeinated coffee? Well, you're probably thinking, huh, this has got to be a trick question because the answer is obvious. The difference is one has caffeine and one doesn't. So the difference is caffeine. Well, the caffeine has some similarities with the caffeinated coffee with the non-caffeinated coffee. Both of them come from the coffee bean. So they're similar that way. It's just the way that they've been processed, to, one to remove the caffeine. Both coffees will impact the body. Many of us need that coffee in the morning to wake up. And some of us, we are so used to taking coffee and wake up, waking up, we don't even notice that the caffeine isn't there in decaffeinated coffee. And uh, the impact of caffeinated coffee is the difference. When you drink caffeinated coffee, you notice that there's something different, a little extra energy that you get. Well, this analogy applies to spiritual gifts uh, and their relationship to abilities. Both come from God. Both have an impact on the body. But this is the body of Christ. And there, it's similar in that spiritual gifts have a greater impact in the body than abilities would have. The key difference in the coffee illustration is whether or not the caffeine was present to do its work. Spiritual gifts versus abilities, the difference is, is the Holy Spirit present doing the work? Or is it we doing the work? Am I doing it or the Spirit? Well, in some ways, spiritual gifts and abilities are identical. They're the same. God gave you both. When you were being designed and created, God gave you natural abilities, certain things that you do so well that you don't even think about it. Now, we knew that you were going to have spiritual gifts, but you didn't receive them at the time that you were born. God uses both natural abilities and spiritual gifts. And both are part of your unique design to fulfill your unique purpose. But there are other ways that spiritual gifts and abilities are very different. Abilities, as I mentioned, were given to you when you were physically born. Spiritual gifts are given to you when you're spiritually born. Only Christians have spiritual gifts. Think about it. The spiritual gift is the Holy Spirit. How could somebody who's not a Christian have a spiritual gift? They don't have the Holy Spirit. So both non-believers and believers, we have abilities given to us at birth, but only Christians have spiritual gifts given to you at the moment of salvation where the Holy Spirit comes to live within you. With abilities, you're the one doing the work. Now, it isn't like the Spirit isn't present. He lives within you. But it's your natural abilities that is helping the people. With spiritual gifts, it's the Spirit doing the work, but doing the work through you as you are surrendered to Him. The final difference is that the primary place for spiritual gifts is in the church. 
That doesn't mean you can't use your spiritual gifts elsewhere. For example, obviously you're going to use the spiritual gift of evangelism outside the church to reach people for Christ. But primarily, spiritual gifts are given for use within the church to help the church grow. Natural abilities, on the other hand, while they are used at church, they're primarily used at your place of employment, at home, uh, in school, or perhaps out in the community. So it's a different emphasis. Spiritual gift, mainly used in the church. Abilities, while used in the church, mainly used outside of the church. Let's take a closer look at abilities. We've been looking at spiritual gifts. We have a basic understanding of what they are, who gets the spiritual gifts, why they're given, and how many are given. But with abilities, we need some background. Now Discover Your Strengths is a book written by Marcus Buckingham and Donald O. Clifton. It's a fascinating book that's based on research done by the Gallup organization about abilities. Listen to this. For 30 years, the Gallup organization has asked one question of 1.7 million employees in 101 companies from 63 countries. 30 years, 1.7 million employees, 101 companies, 63 countries. That's pretty comprehensive. Whatever the results are, it kind of shows what's happening in the world. And they asked the employees one question. At work, do you have the opportunity to do what you do best every day? Well, what do you think the results would be? How many people would have answered yes and how many people would have answered no? Well, the answer is surprising. Globally, in those 63 countries around the world, only 20% believe that they get a chance to use what they do best every day at work. Only 20%. So on the other hand, 80% go through their work day and they never use the things that they do really well. Is it any wonder why so many people hate their jobs? Not once do they get a chance during the day to do what they do best, to do what they like to do. Think of the uh, amount of productivity that's lost in companies because people don't get to do what they do best. Think of the dissatisfaction that people have in their employment because they're stuck doing things they don't necessarily do well. And what do we do? We have a evaluation of our employees, performance evaluation. We sit them down, we spend two minutes telling them what they're doing good, and the other 28 minutes telling them what they do bad, and how they need to improve. Well, think about it. If I have five things I do well, and I don't use any of them in wor at work, then I'm working in areas I don't like and I don't do particularly well. And I could work the rest of my life. I could go to school and study it. I could try really hard by being mentored by people. And I would move from poor to fair in the things I don't do well. Meanwhile, all the things I do well are left on the shelf. Wouldn't it make a lot more sense to find out what do people do well and let them do it? And wouldn't it make more sense for you to find out what are your abilities and does the job you have or the job you're considering, is it something that would make use of the things you do extremely well? You were designed by God and given natural abilities that you would need to fulfill your unique purpose in life. But the amazing thing about this is that they are hardwired into your system. It's like they're in the circuit boards. 
You do them naturally well. You don't even have to think about it. You just do it really, really well, and you think so does everybody else. Uh, it's just natural. Everybody ought to be able to get up front like I do and speak. Yet in studies, pe people have found that public speaking rates higher than death as a, as a person's fear. I'd rather die than public speaking. I do public speaking is what most people say. But I look at it and go, hey, I can do it. Why can't you do it? You probably do things so well, you don't even know it's a strength. But it's hardwired into your system, and there is a way for you to find out what they are. So let me ask you a question. Do you know what you do best? Or perhaps it's better to ask, do you know what your strengths are? Well, if not, then I suggest you find out. And by finding out, you can do what you do best everywhere you go to the benefit of everyone you come into contact with. Whether it's in your family, whether it's in your church, whether it's in uh, the job you have, or perhaps out in the larger community. But by all means, find out what you do really well that other people marvel when they look at you. There are things you do so well that people look at you and go, how does she do that? How, how does he do it? I don't understand. I mean, they just boom, 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 and it's done. And it takes me hours. I remember a pastor friend telling me that he had the gift of shepherding. And the thing that he dreaded the most every week was giving the sermon. He was not a public speaker. And this is true with many pastors. And by the way, it's why many sermons are so boring. They're being given by people who are not well equipped to teach because they don't have the gift of teaching. So let the pastor shepherd, or let the pastor lead, or let the pastor show mercy. Who said the pastor is the one that has to give the sermon? Allow a mature elder or another person that the church has confidence in who has the gift of teaching to give the message. Even a small contribution can make a big difference. Jesus fed 5,000 people because of a little boy's five loaves. Regardless of the amount, your contribution is very important and greatly appreciated. Visit us at tvsseminary.com. So, how can you, in fact, find out your gifts? Well, there are many ways, but I'm going to suggest one that has helped me enormously. I suggest that you buy or that you borrow a book. If you don't have it, go to the public library and get it. I looked on Amazon.com and you could buy this book for $11 US. And there may be friends who have it too. It's called Strength Finders 2.0. Let me say that again. It's one word, strength with an S, Strengths Finder 2.0. And it's by Tom Rath, who's with Gallup Press, and it was published in 2007. Now, I want to make it clear before I go any further, I don't get any money from this, promoting this book. You know, I'm not associated with Gallup. I don't know Tom Rath. Nobody's going to be saying, hey, thanks for, you know, giving our book a little extra zing on this uh, session. I just believe in the book. It has helped me so much, and I think it will help you. And here is how it works. The book, in fact, tells you a great deal about strengths, what they are, why you should use them, and then has a way uh, to help you identify your five top strengths. You have a computer, uh, a code in numbers. 
You go onto the computer, you go to a website, you put that code in, and suddenly you take a test. It is unlike any test I have ever taken. Because in most tests, especially ones like this on abilities, there's one side that I know this is what I do very well and then this is what I don't do well. This test asks you things that don't seem to have anything in common, but apparently from research, they can extract information that tells you what your top gifts are. You have to answer the question in 20 seconds. So you have some time pressure and you have to decide, okay, is this really like me or is this really like me or is it here? And 20 seconds isn't a lot of time when you're trying to decide that. You take about 100 questions and at the end of it, within a matter of seconds, up pops, here are your five greatest strengths. Because Gallup in their research has identified 34 strengths that they believe are common in the workplace at home. These are the master list of the strengths. Now, you'll get different results, but I'll give you an idea of what the results might be by sharing my own. When I took the test, my very first strength was something they called being strategic. And I thought, hmm, I've never done strategic planning. What does that mean? Well, what it means is I'm good at going through all the clutter, all the facts and information and seeing the key points and connecting the dots. And that's true. I do that very well. I like doing that. The second one was something called WOO, W-O-O. And in English, those letters actually are an acronym. It means winning others over. I love to meet new people. I love to make contact with them. I love to find out about who they are, what they're doing in life, and then move on to somebody else and do the same thing. And my family used to say, the best birthday present they could give me was to get 100 people to come to a large room and then let me go into the room and just walk around and meet everybody. I love doing it. For other people, you would go, yeah, you know? I don't even like people, let alone meeting new people. Well, that was my second, very true. So strategic and then woo. And the third one was one they called ideation. What it means is coming up with ideas, looking at a problem and saying, hmm, well, we could do this or we could do that or we could combine this with this. And I love doing that. And I'm sitting there looking at these results going, is there somebody like following me around and noticing what I do well? I mean, this is me. And I, I can't believe it. My fourth one is one that Christians often will end up on their profile. It's called beliefs. We have a certain set of core beliefs that cannot be shaken. Ours happen to be Christian beliefs. Other people could have other beliefs, but for me, it is a bedrock thing that I believe these things, and that's true. You know, I love learning the Bible, I love understanding the core values, the basic message, and again, I can't believe this is me. And the last one, the fifth one, was called futuristic. And as you might expect, it's someone who loves to look out in the future and can gain a picture of what that future might be. That's me. I love to do that. And then I sat back and I looked at those five and I said, huh, I kind of see a connection between all of them. I love to meet new people. And in talking to new people, I gained some kind of ideas of things and then I generate those ideas and I see some problems about how they would be done and I make connections between the ideas to solve it. And then I see how it could work in the future 
and all of it is based on my beliefs. Now I'm telling you, most people who take this have similar results. So I strongly encourage you to take it. But suppose you can't. Suppose you don't have the money. Suppose you're not interested in what I just described. I've got another alternative for you. And this one is free. I suggest you take a test that I developed as part of an organization that I lead and it just simply takes you through core sets of abilities and it asks you, here's a bunch of words that are similar to this strength and I only have six, six. <laughs> and those are all based on words and you describe yourself and then eventually come down with uh, priority list. So how do you get that? You can go online to www.designed to serve. It's designed with an ed, designed to serve.org. And when you get there, you click on free downloads and you'll see down abilities assessment. It will open as a PDF file, save it to your computer, print it out and take the test and you will have some information about what you do very well. And I believe that while it's not probably as uh, sophisticated as the Gallup approach, it still gets the job done. So you decide whether you want to do it and which one you would want to take. But I urge you to find out what you do better than other people. You see, this is your one and only life. It's not dress rehearsal. There are no second chances. You get one time through and that's it. And you want to make the most of it. You want to live the life that God meant you to live. You want to do the things that God wants you to do. You want to have the impact that God wants you to have. You want to live your life so that you can make a difference for Christ with your one and only life. And so I encourage you to find out what are my abilities just as much as what are my gifts and then begin to use those to serve others as Christ serves us. Well in this session we've learned about abilities and we've learned some of the differences between abilities and spiritual gifts. And I have given you some ways that you can find out what your abilities are. And then I've given you a challenge. Use your abilities just like you use your gifts. In our next session, we'll go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and Romans chapter 12 and begin talking about how the human body is an analogy for the body of Christ.